All right. So yeah, my name is Kansky Mihal, again, working for HP. Um, uh, I started as a developer, programmer, software engineer, uh, moved into IT management role. Now I'm a software architect. I'm being engaged uh, by multiple you know, clients. Um, if they need to build some kind of a pro uh, solution, technical solution, right, uh, which will support some kind of a product, right, or a product vision, you know. Uh, so uh, this is my primary role, right? That's enough about me, guys. Um, so the topic today is event storming, analyzing complex domains. Um, and again, uh, forgive my spellings if anything inaccurate. So you will learn what event storming is and uh, why it's important uh, to know about it uh, for product development and product ownership. This is just uh, what we're going to cover in this particular talk. Um, I want to introduce a very uh, nice guy by the name of Alberto Brandolini. He's from Italy. He is the inventor of the event storming. He, is, uh, he has his own company now that uh, basically comes on site. Uh, they do the training. They also analyze uh, certain things and deliver product um, documentation or product vision and help companies to develop useful products. Uh, he's based in Italy, and uh, you can reach uh, him on Twitter. He has his own Git repo, so you can uh, follow what he's up to. Very smart and intelligent guy. He also big part of uh, domain-driven design conference that happens in Denver, happens in Europe. Um, so he's very active in the field. Very uh, interesting to uh, learn and listen. And I'll give a couple of more links at the end of the presentation where you can reach out and uh, for more material. So what we're going to cover today, we're going to cover you know, why complex domains are important uh, to understand and why are they complex. We're going to dive into domain-driven design a little bit, uh, because context is the king uh, for the projects. Uh, we're also going to look into bounded context uh, within a framework of domain-driven design, what it means, so you get a little bit lingo going on. Uh, then we're going to dive into event storming, because event storming is designed to, on top of domain-driven design, that's why domain-driven design occurred first. Uh, it helps to facilitate uh, conversations between uh, de developers, between uh, stakeholders, between business, and as a product manager, product owner, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be facilitating all the discoveries that happens before project starts, right? That's why it's important. Even storming artifacts, yeah, I will introduce the framework, uh, what's important during these uh, sessions with business and technologists, uh, what goes into ingredients for the event storming, uh, and, and I will show you a demo uh, how you can apply event storming principles using uh, certain tools available to you, right? Such as real-time board. Like how do you do it, actually? So a little bit of hands-on. And I will dive into a little bit of the coding at the end. I'll show you how to take the concepts you discover with the users, business, and then how you actually produce a, a live code, right? Uh, code that actually can be delivered uh, to your developers. All right, so first topic is complex domains, right? What defines complex domain? And I'm talking about business domains, right? I'm talking about uh, something like an insurance company has its own complex domain, a financial company, right? If you're running a small mom and pop shop and you're selling, uh, I don't know, let's say you're selling some kind of an item, right? Your domain is not that complex probably, right? Because you have only one or two, you know, or five, you know, how many different types of products that you sell, but those are physical products on the store. If, you, if you're talking about financial companies, like each product has its own uh, variety, right? Like in financials, for instance, I used to work in a financial company where you know, you're selling bonds or you're selling stocks, right? And bonds themselves can have like hundreds of different variations. Not hundreds, but let's say dozens, right? And we need full bonds, corporate bonds, and they have their own very complex rules around right? regulations. How do, you, you know, and how do you build a product for this type of complex uh, environments? You know, not, not easy, right? Again identified by the size of the domain, by the rules that go into the uh, domain and the context, right? What's the context? Is it regulated, not regulated? Like health, health companies probably is another quite complex domain, right? Complex domains are hard. Um, why it's hard? Because it's not easy to learn. They are like very big, very large. You have, access, you have lack of access to subject matter experts usually. They are very stressed to deliver and support those domains. So if it, as, a, as a product owner, you're kind of chasing Multiple subject matter experts uh, sometimes very hard to find. Everybody's lost priority, you know, like you know, nobody really cares about what you're doing because they have their own day-to-day -day jobs. Um, 
and not easy to communicate to know why it's an expert, right? So even if you understand uh, subject matter experts, it's actually very hard to translate to somebody who never been exposed to the complex domain, right? So because I need to learn a new language, right? And, and you, I keep talking about ubiquitous language, a language that both technologists speak and uh, financial speak. So you have to learn it, basically. You have to learn and understand in order to understand some of the rules, some of the um, terminology around it. Uh, right, and that's why it's complex. This, these are the complexities that you're going to be addressing, and event storming will help you to address those complexities. Complex domains must uh, must be broken down, translated, visualized, and documented. Right. Uh, at some point, you need to deliver this in some kind of an artifactual form. It can be documentation. It can be user stories. Right. If you follow agile, it can be formal document. It can be tech design document, um, etc. And they'll help you to understand how those artifacts can be produced out of event storming exercise. Okay, domain-driven design. Domain-driven design is very important these days. It's not a, a new concept that was invented uh, by Eric Evans, who is another genius in this field. Uh, domain-driven design um, right now quite important is because everybody talks about microservices, right? Everything is microservice. And the problem with microservice, the biggest problem is like, you know, what, what does it mean microservice? You know, how big is it? Is it, how big is micro? You know, like, is it, is it like one method, one class? You know, if you're talking about development, is it just one function? Is it like five functions? You know, like, you know, what does it mean to build a microservice, right? And for you guys, it's difficult to understand. For technologists, and I'm, I might put background as a developer, it's also hard to understand. Like, what the hell? Like, you're asking me like, hey, let's build microservices. I'm going to ask you like, you know, what, what is it like, you know? how big they are, right? I may, I may build a, another monolithic application that basically call it microservice. It will have a million lines of code. And so where are the boundaries? So the main driven design basically helps facilitate understanding what the size of a microservice and, and what makes sense to put in one microservice versus the other, right? And uh, that's why it's quite important now. You keep, you keep hearing it a lot, guys. And it, it started already being recognized as a framework um, that um, people follow, but it's going to be even bigger. So you're going to hear this, you know, many, many more times in the future. If microservice architecture will survive, like there may be a different architecture, maybe a serverless ar architecture, where you don't have anything, you just function, right? You just do the function. Okay, so uh, I don't want to like over elaborate here. Again, placing project primary focus on core domain and domain logic, you know, why it's important. Basing complex designs on the model of the domain. Uh, and again, it's all about building the models within the domain and understanding what this model is, right? Initiate a, uh, a creative collaboration between technical and domain experts to iterate, uh, iteratively refine a conceptual model that address particular domain problems, right? Again, source is Wiki, guys. Uh, it's not my thing. It's documented by uh, Wiki as a source. And again, uh, domain driven design is. As you see, event storming also uh, it's, it's a tool to facilitate the discovery. You mentioned the microservices. Is it implicitly tied to domain driven design? Domain driven design, does it only apply on microservices? No, no, no. It's, it's definitely not. The only reason why it's quite important these days is because uh, before microservices, you have this monolithic architecture, right? You just have one code base. And, um, and it's like, you know, sometimes it's also called a spaghetti code, right? Because you have like all the classes exist everywhere, right? And uh, people didn't really care as much about decoupling stuff, right? Because, well, it's just one big blob of code. I'll just go and, you know, add additional method. I don't really care where I added this method, right? And some nice developers, nice architects, they would actually structure this monolithic code into their own modules. But microservices now forces you to think like that, right? It forces you to have the boundaries because it's a separate deploy deployable product, right? It's microservices itself as a product, let's say. That's why it's quite important now, uh, you know, to understand how do you really decouple things. And domain-driven design actually helps you to decouple. That's why it came back to the prominence, right? Because before people in monolithic world didn't really care. They should have cared, but they didn't care. And that's why I have spaghetti code, you know, big, bar, uh, big uh, uh, ball of mud. It's also called this, this, this way, right? It's uh, chaos architecture, the, the most successful architecture that exists. You know, because it's, it's been implemented countless of times, right? It's also called big uh, ball of mud architecture. 
it will always survive. You know, like 90% of all the applications we use just like that, right? So we don't want to do that because it, it has uh, some cost associated with it. All right, guys, so bounded context. Again, microservices just showed up, right? So just to, sh to, to let you know what, what we're talking about here is that you can see, uh, I'm not sure how clearly you see, but you can see that in this case, it's probably some kind of a product company, right? Like maybe, maybe they're selling a product, right? And they have a salesperson, you have uh, opportunity territory customized on the product. Maybe this product is, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, you're selling tickets or whatever, right? You can see that, um, it, you know, this, this ticketing system, right, exists, uh, you know, when you try to sell a ticket, right? And what's important for you when you try to sell a ticket, right? You're going to understand, okay, what's my demographic that I need to go after to sell this ticket, right? And what's important uh, when you think about it? Well, it's important to understand the, the ticket cost, right? How much is going to cost so I can sell as much tickets as possible and what's going to be my revenue, right? And if it's too high, you will not sell. If it's too low, nobody would care, right? But uh, as a salesperson, I'm speak, speaking only about salesperson, but when you, when you move into this tickets into the support context, right? Somebody on a call will actually now answer your questions, right? Because ticket is sold. Ticket is not as important as a selling vehicle anymore, but it's important as a vehicle that connects you to support uh, personnel, right? When you call, give me your ticket number so I can look up your information, right? You give a ticket number now, okay, what is it about? Okay, you know, are you gonna pro provide some food and drinks, you know, for this event, right? So you can see that cost of the ticket is not significant anymore, right? Nobody cares about it, they're already committed to it. So the attributes of the ticket now more important, maybe a unique idea of the ticket, right? Or who bought it, or when they bought it, right? As before, uh, during the sales vehicle, right? You don't even care when ticket is, is bought because it's not even sold yet, right? You care about the price. Now you understand that this context around the ticket or around the product is different, right? And what's supporting this particular product, right? You know, like on this side, you have salesperson. On the other side, you don't have a salesperson, right? So what's, associate, what's important associations with this product depends on the context, right? And the context is the king. So in bounded context is what bound, what's the boundaries, right, of the, your system that ties those things together, right? Because without a salesperson, there is no product to sell. Right, so they, they logically they exist coexist. If you remove salesperson out of bounded context, the entire bounded context, sales context is gone. It's it's not relevant anymore, right? It's something else. Same thing for support. You know, you have a let's say product vision or defect, right? And somebody calls and let's say ticketing ticket doesn't show up on my I know phone, right? Like you know, like I I punch my number, punch the venue and I should, sh I should see the ticket that was assigned to me. I don't see it, right? There is a problem with the ticket. Maybe it's misassigned. Maybe somebody, you know, like forgot to put it in the system. Now you have, you know, the defect can be found. But without this defect management system, maybe this, this product now kind of also is irrelevant, right? It may be relevant to some extent, of course. But if you don't, if you cannot find you in the system, you, 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 you purchase the ticket to spend money, but now you cannot find it. Right? What, I, what I'm trying to basically say, I don't want to be the dead horse here, is that this product exists in each of the contexts, and whatever make up the context, right, has to exist together, right? If it doesn't exist, then the context is gone, right? And what we're going to be doing here, why I'm spending so much time here, is that we're going to be discovering those bounded contexts within your product, right? Because the discovery of the context and what attributes exist in each context is that's what makes it so challenging to build a product. All right, guys. Uh, so the next thing is event storming itself, right? So event storming basically, um, why it's important uh, when you're building a product. Event storming is uh, quite important because the biggest challenge when you try to build something, right, is uh, uh, first of all, understand what you're building, right? So agile way of development basically says, well, we don't really care what we're building, right? As long as we start with something, 
we can build it, right? So let's just produce one page, right? Let's go on the market, let's test the market, see if they like this one page. And then we build something else, right? So you don't really have, uh, you know, the, the, the idea is that basically, you know, don't overthink, right? Just start building it, just start testing the market, you know? And in some products, it, maybe it's, yes, maybe that's how you're supposed to do it, right? If it's a very simple thing, like if it's a, a calendar you're building, right? It's quite easy to start, but again, we're talking about complex domains. Complex domains, you can't just say, okay, let's start building a page, right? Because, uh, you know, it's just complex, and complexities are so high. If you build the page, you know, what's next, right? You know, where's the boundaries? So when storming is helps help you to facilitate these conversations with business, and it helps facilitate the discovery phase, right? It helps you understand what's the context that exists in your business and uh, how those contexts are built. Uh, and you know what exists in, in those contexts, right? So event storming is a, a workshop-based methodology to quickly find what's happening in the domain uh, of a software program, right? Again, not much a software program here, probably more than the business domain. Uh, you, you're discovering it, right? Before even you start building the page, there should be a phase called discovery, right? That's what agile pe people sometimes forget, right? You need to spend some time to discover together with technologists and business what the hell they're building and what the hell environment they're working in and what the contacts are. And this is what it does, you know, it it's basically prepares you to, you know, and takes you through this discovery phase, which is extremely important. Uh, use as a means for business process modeling, data modeling, user journey and requirements engineering, right? Again, uh, it's it applicable to many things. It's not just facilitated communication. It's not just workshop that helps you to talk to business and subject matter experts and technologists that actually produces some stuff, right? There will be a set of artifacts that you take to both development teams and uh, program teams, and you can see, right? And uh, rapidly identify the key concepts in the problem space and align a variety of stakeholders the best way possible, right? Okay, now, guys, I'm not sure how many people uh, know what ThoughtWorks is. Uh, can you raise a hand uh, if you know what ThoughtWorks? Okay, ThoughtWorks is a very important company, guys, right? It's actually based in New York, uh, not, far, not, not far from here, Madison and 29th Street. ThoughtWorks is actually a premium uh, consulting company, right? They, they're very well recognized and they run this thing called Technology Radar. Technology Radar basically is designed around four concepts, techniques, tools, platform, and languages and frameworks. They, each month they go and they evaluate technology that's up and coming, right? And they look at the technology of somebody, you know, with developers and enthusiasts and say, guys, this is brand new technology or this is brand new technique. Is it, is it useful? You know, should we spend time in learning it, uh, it or not? Right, so they kind of give us a favor if it, because there are so many more frameworks coming up, right? So they basically go and sanitize it for us. So if you've never seen a technology radar, you should, because uh, they evaluate a lot of products, right? But what I want to point it out, I want to point it out that there is only one product, right, for techniques that they recommend for adoption, right? And it's called event storming. That's why it's important, guys. This, this, this topic that I'm presenting to you is actually not very well known topic, but it's extremely, extremely well recognized by people who know uh, and who've been experiencing it in their life, right? In, the, I mean, in their professional life. And I'm gonna show you what it is and you're gonna take it from here. Now, event storming has a set of artifacts, right? It's like event storming, you can also hear maybe like a brainstorming, right? Brainstorming is you put ideas and stuff like that. So it's kind of event storming, brainstorming. It's some kind of a game also, right? It's, it's kind of gamification of the interaction with business. And as a kind of, a, as a game-like uh, uh, framework, they have their own artifacts to play with, right? And again, uh, you see the event storming, right? So the biggest thing that you can see here is event, the main event, right? And again, these things are actually sticky notes, right? So they have different sticky notes that you take and you write certain things on them, right? And you put them on the whiteboard. If you would, uh, yeah, if you would see this entire space as a whiteboard, then you would actually, you know, take the sticky notes and you just keep plugging in along the way, right, on this whiteboard. And I'll show you how it looks like in real life in a second. But what are the events, right? Events, 
It's an orange city, right? Again, we have to follow description, right? So because um, as uh, this particular technique will be recognized multiple times, you know, there's a body behind this uh, that basically tries to codify certain things, right? And an orange sticky is codified to be representing uh, a domain events, right? Orange sticky with a verb in the past tense, which is relevant for the domain expert. Okay, what, what events can be uh, in, um, and it, 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 I'll show you guys a couple of uh, examples, and we will examine uh, one specific small domain. It's not complex because it will not take, you know, enough time to explain to you, but it will be in, 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 a, in the context of the coffee shop, right? What, what kind of events can happen in the coffee shop, right? Maybe you uh, receive a coffee bean, right? So you received something, right, in your warehouse. Maybe you sold something, right? Those are events, received beans, sold coffee, you know, invited somebody for the event of some sort, right, or sent something to the users, right? So those are events. And by uh, facilitating communication between business and technology, what you'll be doing is you'll be discovering those events, right? Because some complex domains have, you know, hundreds of events. And those events are not obvious, right? Uh, like in, 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 you know, I came from a fixed income background. When I started this at fixed income, right, selling bonds and municipal bonds and corporate bonds, you have so many events that I've never seen in my life, you know, and, and then when they, even the, the sound of those events, you know, it's foreign to me, right? So I need to discover those events, I need to document it. So as a technologist, I understand the context of what I'm working with. Now, there is also a blue sticky with a verb called action. What is action in this case? Action is uh, you do something and an event happens, right? You take the money, right, and you sell the coffee, right? The, the action is, do, you know, do something for event to happen. Right, so you placed an order for coffee beans, and coffee beans arrive into your warehouse. Are your events always interacting with the external world, or can they be all internal as well? Yeah, events definitely internal. Most of them are internal, but also external, right? For instance, uh, if you're using some kind of a third-party software to send an email, right, to your customers, you say, okay, send email, send email is action, right? And email was sent to customers using, let's say, you know, instant contact or MailChimp, right? So those are external events that interfaces with external system, but you also have internal events, right? Organize your warehouse based by coffee bean type, right? Coffee, you know, coffee beans organized by, by type, right? So, but most of them in internal because you'll be building software internal for the most part with external interfaces. Uh, aggregates, uh, vanilla sticky with a noun, right? What's aggregate? Aggregate is those nouns, right? Every time if you discover a product, you'll, you'll notice, okay, what, what are the nouns in your business, right? Uh, and I'll, I'll, st I'll try to, I mean, guys, this is very important, right? That's why I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here. I'll show you code very quickly. So I don't have to borrow, you know, I don't have to be bothered with code. But this is important to understand, right? These four events, there are more, I mean, more stickies, right? Uh, but those four stickies, in my point, there is maybe one more missing from this one, it's quite important, so next slide. But aggregate is those nouns, right? So we keep talking about coffee shop, right? And beans keep coming up, right? Bean, 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 right? Coffee, bean, it's all about bean. It's roasting the bean, it's stacking the bean, it's making coffee out of the bean. So you can see that bean is quite an important concept, right? And there's thing, a, lot, a lot of things happens under this concept of bean, right? because you're roasting it, like what's the temperature like to roast a uh, bean to properly? What would be the most uh, ripe bean, right? And stuff like that. So you can see in, in, in intuitively, you see it's a noun and it, it's called an aggregate and domain driven design and event storming and also we'll call it an aggregate. That's why there's a sticky. So you're gonna be writing those nouns, you know, bean, you know, a coffee, right? A customer, right? And uh, you will be, uh, and I'll show you why it's quite important to document this stuff and understand what's really an important noun. Because some, some nouns can be quite insignificant and may fall under this bin, right? An example may be, you know, a country of origin, right? Like, you know, Ecuador, maybe. Or something like that, right? But it's not as important. You just, it's like an attribute on a bin, but, you know, this, this attribute has its own set of attributes. You know, how many time zones it has, you know, like, you know, what's the export-import policies, right, and stuff like that. But it's not as important, you know, for us, bin is most important. 
So what's most important, mix an aggregate, right? And then you have UI mock-up screens. Uh, you'll be also always working with UX guys, designers to produce those mock-ups. And all these things come together, and I'll show you in a second how it all works. Another set of stickers, right, very important, actors. I'm gonna go faster here, guys, because I don't think they're as important. But actor is very important, yellow sticky with a noun. Actor is, those are, those are your people, right? Those are your users uh, who you actually interact with. So you have a customer who is uh, always coming to the coffee shop and it's your best customer, right? And sometimes a uh, tourist pass by and this is your tourist, right? Each of them have a different uh, needs uh, when they come to your shop. Right? One guy comes in or girl comes in because they want to have specific a coffee that you have in stock and you don't have it always, right? You only have it like during the peak season. And your needs are different from the tourist who just passes by in Times Square and they need the coffee because it's cold and they just walk in and they don't care as much, right? So again, we're talking about user journey, like, you know, what's the user profiling? Like, how, how do they interact with you? What's most important? Who do you spend more attention because it's your repeat customer versus customer who just casual, you know. You know it's casual. Like, why do you have to waste your time on a casual customer if your uh, regular stands in line, you know, and stuff like that. So those actors def defining those customers, defining who works for your business as well, you know, somebody attending a stock, you know, he's an also an actor. Again, guys, uh, in the policies, you know, what kind of policies you have, right? If you sell a coffee, it shouldn't be high, high you know, the temperature shouldn't be like, a boiling temperature it should be some some kind of a lower temperature that people don't get burned and see you you know see you as a, as a as a company right so those are kind of policies that you know in in the framework of your product you need to understand and discover as well right some policies in complex domains there's a lot of regulation going on right those are policies as well so you're going to write them on a sticky okay what's my policy for you know for certain things that uh, exist in my business external systems I think you already heard me right talking about external systems it's a green sticky and hotspot. It's a dark pin sticky hotspot. Basically, when you talk to business and technologists, sometimes they will come up with questions, and I've seen it in my past life. You start explaining something, and uh, you know, architect or tech lead asks, okay, what does it mean? You know, can you explain a little bit more? And all of a sudden, subject matter experts you have available right now have no clue, right? Because it's such a small piece and such a unique piece that you need to bring another subject matter expert uh, into the room who's not available right now, so you're gonna, you're gonna write a question, what kind of question you have, so you don't forget it. Because remember, this is a workshop environment, right? You bring everybody in one room and you, and you spend time with them. So hot, hot spots, yeah, there's a questions and things that are not clear right now, but needs to be clarifi clarified. All right, so what's the ingredients for the event storming? Event storming needs to have uh, right people in the room, right? It's a mix of stakeholders, subject matter experts, problem solvers, tech leads, and facilitator. Hopefully you are gonna be the facilitator. You're gonna take this technique to your company and you're gonna facilitate a discovery that you need uh, you know, for your product development. It requires a room with unlimited modeling space, right? Lots of stickies and sharpies. Uh, unlimited modeling space, you know, if you look at this wall, right, it's quite long. Imagine this is like a whiteboard, right? This is how much room you need, right? If you, if you have only one small uh, board, you know, one small room with this much board, you know, it's not going to be as productive because uh, when you start engaging business, you actually understand it's so engaging that they're going to start, you know, plastering this photo with all the different stickies. And you have a lot of stickies you have to take care of, right? So it needs, it needs, it needs to be set up correctly. The main events along the timeline. Timeline is very important. What's missing right now from user stories and from functional requirements, there is no timeline. You read it as a book. Even when I read a book, right, there is a start and there is an end. Right, and certain things repeat. Sometimes they bring you back into back in time, and they kind of tell a different slide, a different story, right? But when you have a user stories, you know, broken down and entered in Jira, for instance, you know, I have no idea uh, if this user story is important at the beginning of the pro process, or you know, workflow, or at the end, or in the middle. And why is it important at the, at the beginning, right? I have no idea. Business just tells me like implement this because this is my priority number one but I don't understand why it's important. And I don't wanna be a mechanical developer. I don't wanna develop just because somebody tells me, right? I wanna engage my creative mind. Maybe I can give a valuable feedback to you as a business, as a being developer in the midst of it, right? So I need the timeline, I need to understand the story, right? Again, back to story, uh, storytelling, right? It's always about the timeline. And, it, and timeline is quite important in event storming. Um, Sorry. You talk about the domain events a long time. 
timeline, I worked in some complex domains where what made it complex was the asynchronous nature. Mm. Yeah. So what do you do? And that, will this still apply if most of your events, at least your external events, are asynchronous? It will apply. It will apply, and you'll see how it applies. And again, uh, um, we start talking about asynchronous uh, versus synchronous, right? And there is a sequence of events that happen sequentially, or you just fire and forget, right? And at some point, you know something comes back to you, right? And you don't know at what point in the future it will come back to you. So it's very hard to, um, you know, to gauge, at, you know, the time for that event to come back and do another action because each event that you fire will have some kind of an action, and then you will reproduce another event, for instance. And uh, so, but it will, it will help you to visualize, you know, when, at what point, you actually must receive this event back, even though it's asynchronous, because if you don't receive it back, you know, the entire interaction that you started for this particular asynchronous event now makes no sense, right? Because you need to close the deal. Without this event, you cannot close the deal, right? Um, state of flow, right? And this is very important. Um, because um, uh, when you when you talking when you talk to a business uh, in some kind of engaging and game like manner, everybody starts uh, setting the focus. You know, everybody becomes very focused. You know, to specific task at hand. It's like playing a game, right? Like if you play a game, you forget time, right? Because it's so engaging. And it's not dreadful, right? It's actually you happy now, right? Because your mind is completely in this kind of state of flow. And this is what makes a lot of artists happy, right? Because they, they don't paint pictures. You have a great picture here, right? You think they paint it for you so you can enjoy it. Actually, no, a lot of painters, you know, they paint because they are the most happiest while they paint the picture, right? They are living a happy life. We're producing this art form. And they don't care if it's going to be on somebody's wall or not, you know. They, when they paint, they are very happy, right? What makes you happy, right? If you're a gambler, maybe you go to a casino, it makes you happy, right? Like, you, know, you, may not, you may not be happy at the end of it, but while you're gambling, you're like, you're like creative juices going, you have all these strategies, right? But you don't know the time, and time is gone, right? Same for artists, same for gambler. So what I'm, uh, what I'm saying is that event storming will put together business technology in one room, and everybody has a state of flow because it's a game, right? You're playing this game by the rules or artifacts, right? Engaging. So everybody becomes attuned to the state of flow. And by, because they are so much engaged, you're now getting a lot more recognition for your time, right? You're not wasting your time. They actually, they're not sitting in a, in a boring meeting, right? Because it's quite interactive. Like I said, it's a room and people walk around. They don't sit. There is no hierarchy, right? Everybody is valued. So I'm not sure you real quick here how it looks like. So if I remember I told you, like modeling space, right? Again, credit to Alberto Brandolini because he is an inventor. It's, this picture is out of his book, and I'll show you the link to his book, and you'll find it. Event storming, right, guys? By the way, you can see here, right? I got a sticky too. Event storming on my machine, right? And you should get a sticky as well. That's why I'm saying it. I'm not bullshitting, guys. You know, I'm actually practicing and following this heartily, right? So what you need, you need, again, modeling space, whiteboard, right, with a lot of stickies on it, right? You, can, you notice it's an orange stickies because events are quite important. It's number one sticky in this particular game, right? You see the sticky notes and markers on the table, right? It's a lot of sticky notes right there. And you can see, again, the orange one is actually has, a, you know, the biggest stack because those are quite important. You see some rules, right? Visible uh, legends, you know, and stuff like that. You know, what's event storming, you know? And then you have uh, another uh, paper roll, right? Because sometimes if it's too complex and you spend a significant amount of time, even you may run out of modeling space. So you take this down, you put another roll, and you keep adding to that roll, right? And uh, no seats in sight. You can see it's, it should be engaging. It's, you know, people walk. Should be also good for employees uh, with health problems. You know, they get some exercise, and because they're in the flow, they they, they don't really you know notice the time. So it's a lot of calories get burned in those rooms, and I've been in a few of those rooms, and it's quite intensive, guys. You know, it's gonna be it's good for the health of your company as well. All right, guys. So this is an example of the setup. Okay, so I've been talking a lot, guys. 
I'm going to do a demo. Like, do you have any questions right now before diving into the demo? All right. If not, we'll, we'll have some questions at the end. So the demo is, uh, how do you do this, right? What's, what's, um, what's one of the things you can actually build around it? And let me show you the demo real quick. All right, so in this case, uh, I know it's quite small. I'm, gonna, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But this is a real-time board, right? I'm not sure if you've never used this kind of application. This is an extremely useful application for uh, your development needs as a product owner, right? You're going to love this once you start do, you know, playing with it. It takes a little bit of time to learn it. But you can see here now, right, what I have is I have those sticky notes, right? Events, actions, aggregates, aggregates, external systems, and issues, right? So aggregates, uh, slightly different color, but it should be like vanilla color, right? So let's fix that real quick. So you go here and I um, think you do it this way. Uh, no. All right, forget about it. So again, these are the artifacts that you're going to be doing. So what's nice about this particular thing, you know, I can control C and control V and I have the sticky available to me and I can move it around the board, right? And this board is quite, you know, quite long, right? If I zoom out, you can see that I can put a lot of stickies in here. And you can see already, like, you know, there's a preview that I have quite a few stickies prepared. So let me zoom in. So what you do is this, right? Again, you know rules of engagement, you know all the artifacts. What I'm, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have all these people, maybe five or six people in one room, right? And I say, guys, I apologize for this. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask how do we start? What's, what's the most important event that begins? You know, that's like, what's the um, genesis, right? What's the makes of Big Bang, you know, in our business? And somebody tells you, like, maybe a mentor or manager, right? You can see here, these are actors. Also, listen, before anything happens in, in, in a coffee shop, right, I receive a coffee bean, you know, because be, 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 before, bean, before I can have a bean in my space, you know, like, nothing can happen, right? Again, guys, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see it, right? So what you do is you actually take a sticky note and you give it to the event, uh, inventory manager and say, well, okay, write it down and put it on the board, right, as the first thing that you do. And they write a note and they put it on the board, just like here, right? And you annotate it with invent inventory manager, right? You, you take this, you take this uh, orange sticky, you write the name of the actor who is receiving it and you're putting it, right? On the board as well. And then what happens? What, what happens next? You know, you're asking those questions, so you're facilitating it, right? Like, what happens next? And you say, well, the, I put this coffee in an inventory system. I write them in some kind of a Excel file, and I take the actual physical piece and I move it to a shell, right? And you can, <clears throat> you can actually see, you know, those events keep happening. And again, you only care about events at the beginning, right? What you're doing now is you're actually setting up high-end, end-to-end uh, set of events that exist in your business, in your domain, right? Domain of selling coffee or whatever domain you're working in. And again, this is coffee shop for an example because it's a simplistic domain, right? We're talking about insurances, you know, like we're talking about, you know, taking company uh, public, you know, what's, what, what takes to, to make company public, you know, the IPO process. You know, it's like hundreds of events, thousands of events, and you need to understand those events and document those events. And that's what you do. You basically keep discovering it, right? So I'm taking and updating inventory in my uh, QuickBooks, right? I'm updating the quantity, right? Okay, the QuickBooks showed up. What's QuickBooks? Well, this is an external system that I'm working with, right? It's maybe QuickBooks Online, um, and I'm subscri subscriber to it, right? Now, you say, oh, okay, you don't really care about right now, but take a mental note as a facilitator, okay? There should be external system QuickBooks, right? So, okay, put it up, and allocated five kilos of coffee beans for the day roast event, right? So, I'm not sure if you like coffee or not. There is a big jar of coffee right there prepared for you guys, but real knowledgeable guys or girls who like coffee, they know that when you roast the coffee, you know, the most optimal taste is achieved in three days after the roast. So a lot of coffee shops, they make things called roast day event, right? They will announce ahead of time, you know, they're gonna have a roast of this specific coffee, this specific bean, it's gonna be available to you on December 22nd, let's say, right? 
And everything happens around this event, right? And maybe you'll see it uh, as, I, as I keep going. So I'm allocating five kilos of coffee beans for this rose day event, right? I'm just gonna do it. Uh, and again, it's all inventory manager, right? And then what happens next, right? Then barista comes in. And uh, what my barista does, you know, I start breaking down those coffee beans by type because it's not just that the roast is important, you know. It's also important how many types are going to be roasted, right, and stuff like that. So barista, knowledgeable, he knows the domain. He's another subject matter expert that's, you know, it's a secret sauce, right? Like why everybody come to you and not the next coffee shop? Well, because they have the best subject matter expert. But now a lot of things, uh, you know, start coming up, right? Here, maybe barista is not present in the room, right? Maybe this barista is just, somebody knows what he does, but nobody knows the secret sauce of barista that makes, so, you know, makes him so famous. So you start having all these questions. You can see, remember the hot, hot spots, right? Uh, and why it's called hot spots, I'll explain in a second. But you see, okay, what kind of coffee types, you know, how many types, right? And you have all the questions coming up, like, you know, the creative juices is flowing, right? Because People in the state of flow, they have a lot of questions, right? So what, what, what happens now is you are uh, putting the stickies with all these questions around this particular um, uh, event, right? The amount of type allocated by, for the rose dates, right? Breakdown by type. And you, you shouldn't forget that all these questions are quite important. They are very important. What you start noticing, right, as you start putting these events together, you start noticing that, well, I don't have any questions in this inventory management, right? While I'm doing the inventory of the coffee beans, but I have a lot of questions here, right? So my hotspot is here. That's why those are hotspot stickies, right? With all the questions. And what usually happens is it's a visual cue to you as a product developer saying, okay, if so many questions, it means that we need to spend more time on this particular aspect of this entire documentation because it, it looks like it's not being fully discovered, right, during sessions. Again, hot spots, you know, so you know we need to come back and you need to spend more time, maybe bring barista back because there is a clear need for subject matter expert to be in the room and you take a second day, you bring everybody else to, together and you put barista, you bring them in and you actually extract those knowledge because it's very important for the product, right? And then, uh, you know, you have this marketing stuff going on, right? Like if, while barista is breaking down by the type, there is a marketing person creating an calendar of events, right? Maybe. You're going to be planning uh, six months ahead, all these event, events happening, right? So I'm going to put it in the calendar. I'm going to put it, announce it. Maybe it's a Google calendar. Maybe I have subscribers to the calendar, right? So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be creating the calendar. I'm creating a dates for those events. I'm sending notifications to the users, right? And remember, like, uh, past tense, right? It's all the verbs. Created calendar is created. And a date is added to the calendar, you know. The email is sent to the users, right? All those events. And again, <clears throat> you see these little lines around those events now, right? Those lines not exist initially, right? You just ask people uh, just to put those events on the whiteboard. It's all the events, all the orange sticky. Now, nothing, no, no other sticky right now being worked except maybe two, right? Is your actor sticky, which is orange, and uh, sorry, uh, I guess uh, yellow. yellow, and then orange is your events. Just this, right? Just make everybody think uh, at a little bit higher level, so you have end-to-end. -end. But then you're going to dive, and I'll show you how you dive into more discovery, right? Because there was in a detail, right? Like, I understand all these events, but what does it really mean? How do I build a system out of those events, right? I still need the nouns, I still need the actions, I still need screenshots, and I still understand the data, right? Because data is everything, right? Content is king, context is king, and you know, everything is king, basically. Uh, yeah. You talked about time earlier. Yeah, time. Time, time is represented. Right or something Very like good that. question, right? Very good question, right? So somebody pays attention here. Okay, so this line here, right, is a timeline, right? And you can put even, and I've seen it in the past. I've done it myself in the past, right? Because when you take company, let's say, I, uh, public, right? It's literally like three days, you know, of activities, because you know, from, from the moment you announce the deal. And until you close the deal and, and sell all the shares, it takes usually one or two days, maybe sometimes a one day, right? So the timeline here is like one day, right? One hour by hour, what happens, right? Everybody is waiting for it, right? It's almost like 
the situation room, like a war room, right? Everything is so compressed. Uh, and you can actually put, uh, you know, like one, you know, like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, six, you know, 1 p.m., 3 p.m., whatever, right? Uh, sometimes this timeline, because it's such a high level thing that you're building, right? Maybe like months. It take months to assemble the car and sell it, right? Well, not, not, not maybe months, maybe like a few days these days. But again, this is the timeline. It's quite important, right? So you understand that it always should be there and so visible. So we can assume from that that the allocation activity and the marketing activity are happening kind of in parallel. Correct, correct, exactly. So this is another important question, right? So you can see some things happening in parallel, right? It's not a sequential model here. And it's, business never happens. You have so many departments. They work together sometimes. Sometimes, you know, they cannot work together because you don't have availability. You know, how am I going to schedule an event if I don't have stock, uh, stuff in stock, right? And I'm not even sure I'm going to get it or not, <coughs> right? Because it is a transportation collapse, you know? Like, every, every, there's no, 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 no delivery is happening in the next two, two days. So that's why it's quite important, guys. And I'm running a little bit low on time here, but... Uh, so let's have questions that you'll end with, guys. There's some questions I'm going to answer during the conversation, but those are quite important questions. Please keep them in mind. And then, uh, you know, my roast uh, happens, right? I'm roasting the coffee, like coffee roasted now. And the roasted coffee is now stored, right? Again, remember those events. And there is another question that comes up, like, you know, and then again, the barista is missing, right? So there may be this quiet question is coming up now, right? You know, the marketing has another question came up, right? Uh, maybe is it calendar? What kind of calendar is it? Yearly calendar, whatever question may be, right? But you can see the hot spot is here, right? This is where you need to spend more time next next day to discover it, you know, because it seems like a lot of people are confused about it, right? And then sales happened, right? On a rose day event, you have sales, and then coffee sold again, you know, owner starts the event, and then barista basically sells the coffee. And again, you know, what you're doing is this, right? Like, you know, coffee is sold, and, uh, you know, maybe I have another event that, that needs to be here, right, which is quite important. Maybe uh, co coffee uh, dispensed or something, right? So you can see here, I'm like, and who is doing it? Maybe a salesperson doing it, right? So I'll take this. And again, yeah, I'm just modeling. I'm modeling here sometimes. Uh, salesperson, right? Sales person, whatever. Right, so I know who's doing it, right? So after, after it's done, right, after this high level done, you know, you're putting all the events and say, everybody look at it, so happy. Yes, this is all things that we do. It's all the events that happens between start and end, right? What you start noticing here, right, and this is something that you do it right after, it becomes obvious to you after you're done with it, is you, you take, you take this uh, little marker, because it's a whiteboard, remember, and you start saying, okay, let's see what happens. Let's see how we can group those events together, right? Certain events are naturally grouped. It just jumps at you. And you can see here what I'm doing is like, wow, we just talked about this management of the bean and an inventory, right? And it looks like it's a warehouse management system, right? Because it's like allocating, you know, not allocating, it's like adding information, you know, like adding... Receiving it, you know, stocking, you know, into the shelves and stuff like that. And like it jumps at you like, bah, you know, this is it. You know, this is the warehouse management system right here, right? And here is this allocation happens, right? Because the selection process happens. This is your secret sauce, right? That's why everybody come to your store, right? And then this is marketing stuff. Oh, wow, okay, let's just put around the boundary around it, right? Remember bounded context, right? Bounded to something, by something. So this is how we're bounding stuff by events. Those events coexist together, right? If I take one event out of our house, right? Coffee never received. This whole thing meaningless, right? So event is missing, right? And uh, maybe in other events is not as significant, but this is quite important event, right? Again, speaking in terms of events. And what you do now, what you're doing is you're actually putting boundaries of all the events. And what you're, what you're doing now is you're decoupling, right? You're decoupling your business functions into their own functions, quite important for a specific purpose, right? Again, breaking down uh, monolithic application, right, for software developers was always challenging. Like what goes for, in, in, you know, what goes into this namespace? I'm not sure if you know what namespace is, but in development is like, okay, I'm gonna write all the code that coexist together, right? 
and microservices. Okay, how do I build microservices? Well, you can see right here. I have warehouse microservice, right? I have allocation microservice. I have marketing microservice. To me, it's not obvious, you know, what's the size of a microservice? Well, everything that takes care of those events should be coexist together. Maybe this one transaction happens, you know, that needs to be a transaction, right? Some stuff getting uh, passed between these two different bounded contexts, right? Like what is being passed, you know, the bean is being passed. Once I start it, I give this bean information to my barista and barista start working with it, right? So now I understand what's being passed between microservices. What's the, what's the interfaces, right? What I take from one microservice produce as an output and what I pass it to my another microservice that expects something to get to, right? So those are interfaces. You're like, wow, holy cow, right? It's like a revelation. And you have the technologists in the room. They're like, bam, yeah, I'm going to prototype it tomorrow because everybody creative, everybody having this, you know, creative juices flowing, right? And I've seen it, you know, like, yes, it's, it's just amazing to see it, guys. You know, like, everybody is confused, like, first hour. Like, they have no idea what you're talking about. Like, you know, it's brainstorming, like, sticky notes. Like, why are we here? I have business to do, right? But you see, after two, three hours, everybody gets into this kind of flow, state of flow, and everybody becomes so engaged, so, you know, fascinating, fascinated by all this game, right? And then developers jump in, and you now they don't even forget about hierarchy structure, right? You know, remove all the managers. Like, non-doers don't exist in this process. All the managers that basically, you know, manage people, you know, I don't know what it means to be managed people because you don't manage the artists, right? Are these the manager in why he's painting picture? Tell him, like, you know, you have to finish this guy in three days, right? And you need to finish this lady in five days, right? <laughs> Managers are useless uh, people, technically speaking, right? Because uh, when something you're creating, you know, it's all about you, it's all about doers, people who are delivering it, right? And uh, maybe a person wants to paint, you know, like, you know, as, 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 as a customer, as a consumer, I want to paint something that reminds me of my childhood, right? So I talk to the artist and say, listen, I love New York City. I want to have, I want to see New York City during the winter season, right? Paint me a picture, right? I understand you don't care about it, just paint it because, you know, artists need to also eat and, you know, survive somehow. Sometimes they do it for money, but most of the time they don't do it for money. But again, you understand that you're talking to artists, to the, to the buyer, right? And this thing happens. There is no manager, right? Because buyer doesn't tell the artist, you're going to build this guy in three days or this guy in five days. And what's most important, this road is number one. You have to paint the road. To me, it's the most important thing, right? And then you're going to add this person and this person, right? You know, they, what's important, you know, for the artist? Well, just give me the entire thing that you want, right? And I'm going to paint it for you, right? And you're talking, right? You, you're discovering it, what you're going to paint. Same thing as product. You're discovering it. You're talking to a business and you're talking to a painter who is a developer, right? Software engineer. And software engineer doesn't need to be managed. Software engineer needs to be engaged, right? Uh, you need to open up creative juices of software developers. Don't give them tasks. You're gonna, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna kill the creativity of the developer. They're gonna quit the company, I promise you. Because somebody who does event storming and who engaging developers in a different way, they're gonna gravitate towards these companies, right? Don't give me the tasks. You know, I'm not a machine. You wanna have a machine, I'll show you, by the way, in another couple of minutes how you build this thing uh, in, a, in a mechanical way. But this is quite important, guys. All right. So uh, we're really running low on time. So what, what you do next, once you build this end-to-end high-level event types, you basically take this and you say, well, I have the boundary now, right, around these certain events. And this is my, uh, let's say, a marketing boundary, right? So I'm going to dive into this. I'm going to discover nouns now. I'm going to discover actions. I'm going to discover policies, and I'm going to discover other questions that may have. So now you actually can set your focus on a specific um, bounded context, and you have, you know, your focus. You, you know, you, this is what you're doing, right? So you take this whole thing in terms of events, and you move to a second stage. And again, this is timeline, right? Like this line up, up there is the timeline again. But it's just a slice of this timeline, right? So it's, it's, a, it's a segment of this timeline, right? If this timeline one year, and this thing may be like one month, you take this one month and you also can schedule it, you know, like day by day. And what you start having here is that 
if it's a marketing thing, right? Or in this case, yeah, it's, it's a marketing context. What you're doing here is, this is very important, guys. This, this, this diagram here is, is a killer, right? This is what you're going to, if nothing else, if you take this away as a mental frame of reference, you're going to, you're going to, I'm successful of professing this technique to you guys, right? So what you see here is this, right? You see this access screen. Remember, you, are, you, you know, I, I had UX mock, right, or screen mocks. So those are mocks, right? And it is this particular mock screen called access screen, right? There will be some kind of fields you can see there, you know, for accessing the system, username, password, whatever, right? But there is also, um, you know, those events that exist, right? Access to a given uh, history of records given or to a given to a, the system is given or provided, right? And then what's, what's a noun, like access, right? Access itself, like role, is a, is a noun that exists, right? You're assigning a role to a user, okay? Maybe user is another noun. But what, what's an action here, right? Well, action maybe, uh, so this is not really an action, right? Uh, uh, add a user to uh, security, security or something like that. So this is an action, right? Sorry for a mistake. Uh, system. So system admin is another actor, right? So you can see it wasn't obvious to you that, by the way, you know, like I didn't know this event happens. You know, and we didn't have event because we were doing a hell of a event, but now you start diving into it and you say, well, like, we discover more events. Just yeah. a quick question. Is an uh, action a trigger that triggers an event? Correct. It? Yes. It's, uh, and I'll show you guys, you, you probably know like, you know, Agile quite a bit now, right? It's, it's, it's a user story. What is it? User story, right? As a somebody, like, and it's quite, now it's quite clear to you, right? If, if you did not discover it yet, you're gonna, I'm going to show you right now, right? How you add user stories to your backlog. Well, this technique actually gives you those user stories, right? As a user, right, I do something, which is an action, you know, on some kind of like an object, maybe on a user object or on a user profile, right? So I add a user profile so that this user can be created, right? Boom. You don't have to even think what the user story is and how to write user stories, right? You map out all these events and everything that follows after you deep diving into this particular bounded context, those are user stories. Those are things that you discover and you actually don't have to write it anymore thinking through, right? It's actually quite visual. You can see this is one user story, right? This is another user story right here, right? Click, create calendar, calendar, you know, like as a, as a marketing person, I click on the button to create a new calendar, calendar is created, right? So that I can, you know, advertise my event, right? Is another user story, right? And by the way, something else happens after I create a calendar, right? Maybe this activity is logged now into some kind of a, a, a logging system, right? And it's another event that you discover. You didn't care about during high level, right? You care about events, but now you're deep diving into it. Now group is not just five, six people, but quite focused now to a specific uh, marketing, right? A lot of noise missing, missing now, right? Uh, you, only, you only care about uh, marketing event. And you keep adding marks, right? So let's talk about uh, how calendar is gonna look like. Well, a calendar is going to look like this, and you have a mark of this calendar, right? It's going to be a monthly calendar. You don't care about a weekly calendar or a yearly calendar. This is, this is a mark, right? So you're going to put a mark, right? And, and again, timeline, right? You see the timeline here. And what you do, right, for the data guys, the guys who are quite important, who works with data, you start actually modeling those data points. What goes into the calendar, right? This is not relevant to this. I'm just throwing it as, as an example here, right? You know, maybe a name, you know, I'm not talking about, again, this, is, this thing is not relevant to that specific calendar. I, I'll, I'll explain you why it's, you know, I'm putting it here, it's just kind of an example. But maybe a day, maybe a year, maybe a month. Those things are an attribute of the calendar, right? So you start modeling it. You say like, okay, what's required? Well, day is required, time is not required, right? Okay, what's the, what's the length? Is it a string, right? Is it, you know, is, is, there, is there some kind of UI rule, UI rule around it, you know, and stuff like that, validation rule, so you keep documenting. This is all, 
in YAML format, right? Uh, if you don't know YAML, what YAML means is uh, yet another markup language, right? It's called YAML. It's quite easy for you to uh, work if you understand what the format is and you're documenting your you know, data model that's important for this screen. And I'll show you why it's important in this event storming exercise, right? right? And here again, you can see like access roles, right? I'm actually, well, the name is important, right? And the name is going to be string, and uh, you have certain business rules around the username, right? It cannot be 300 characters long, maybe it's just 20 characters. So, so you document what's the minimum length. And in here, I have only one, right? So maybe we need to add it to like, so maybe add it to like, you know, 15 or whatever, right? And uh, so it's quite obvious to you, right? And stuff like that. And again, what, you, what happens, you take these domains, right? You have screens, you have models that support those screens, right? And again, guys, I'm a developer by, you know, from the beginning. If you give me this instead of user stories, if you give me this instead of FRDs, functional requirement documents, right? I'm going to allow you forever. Seriously. Yeah. Because as a developer, I never read FRDs, right? I always come back to you as a business analyst and say, hey, listen, and I, like, like I, read, I, read, I, read, I read first page and I go to sleep. You know, my concentration is gone. Right? Let me just start building something. You know, like you don't ask a painter, you know, like, listen, read these uh, six pages of things and then you're going to paint it for me based on this requirement, right? I just, you know, give me something you know, visually, right? So I can actually understand, I don't have to read and I create it for you, right? And it's also, you're creating something, it's all visual, right? That's why it's so important and so powerful because it's also visual. So again, guys, uh, 7.49, I'm gonna run maybe for five more minutes. I'm gonna take questions right after, if you don't mind. Unless you wanna, you know, ask your questions. All right, great. I don't, I don't, lose you. I don't want you to lose your question. So what's, what's important, guys, here, right? Is that this is your user stories, right? You remember? All these tickets, right? But what's also important is that in this marketing context, right, I can actually modularize it now even further, right? So I have a bounded context called ma marketing. But inside marketing, what I can do is I can break it down to modules. And this module is quite important as well because this module will drive compartmentalization of your application. Why it's important? Well, you keep hearing about reuse, right? Okay, what can be reused, what cannot be reused? What can be built as a module, right? What makes a module, right? Because if you have five modules here, right, and all these boundaries are around modules, maybe this module is not as important, right? Like this history around the module, right? But this module is quite important, and this module is quite important, right? And you see I'm, uh, I'm drawing some stuff because it's a visual, I can actually jump at me. Okay, this is access module. Right, I have one developer working on access module and one developer working on the calendar module. So what's important now? What's important by having this module is that you can assign work to your development team that uh, they deliver in uh, isolation and don't step on each other's toes, right? If you give them two user stories that work on the calendar, right, to two developers, they're gonna be in constant conflict because they need to check in code to the same calendar you know, thing, right? And while we're doing this uh, conflict resolution, right, of all the uh, check-ins, they're wasting their time, right? But modularizing it, I can actually give you, like, you work on access, you work on the calendar. It's so easy, right? Now you can make them productive, they don't clash with each other, they completely compartmentalized and stuff like that, but they, uh, they understand the events. All right, guys, promise you, five minutes. So what happens next? I'm gonna show you a secret sauce for the developer, right? It's demo time. I'm a developer, right? HP developer, you see the topic. So what happens now is this. This is my project, right? What I do is this. You just tell me, you just told me like that there is an address, right, exists. And you already gave me the YAML format, right? You told me like, well, there is a street, it's gonna be street, it's gonna be city, uh, attribute is gonna be state attribute, zip code, right? I don't know if you can see it or not. So what I do is this. I go to this I go to this event storming exercise, right? I take this YAML, right? I copy paste. You see here address, right? I copy paste. I go into my little project, like little thing, that's secret, right? Nobody knows. That's my secret tool, secret thing. I paste in here, 
right? Copy paste, the most uh, well known development uh, command, right? Like 90% uh, we spend uh, working with software development is copy paste, right? Go Google it, you know, copy paste, copy paste. But now I'm copy pasting something different, right? not like some other person, not known to me. So I know this is valuable copy paste. This copy paste has a lot of knowledge on it, right? So I do this, I copy paste for, you know, like in this case it's pet name, right? It's project designed around the pet use case. Not about coffee shop, right? What's important, what's important about pet? Age, date of birth, right? And, you know, like address for pet seats and veterinary where I'm going to, right? This is things that are prepared for you as a business, uh, as a business product owner. And what I do next is I copy paste, right? Veterinarian, the name of it, right? And what I do next is this, guys. This is magic, right? So what I will do next is this. I say npm run. I think it's dev. You just say, well, I already have it. I already ran it, so I know. Yeah, npm run dev, right? So I click. It takes whatever you copied it, right? And it builds a software product on the fly. Right? So I know it's, it's, it's a website because I'm building microservice, right? And I'm isolating it to a specific bounded context. So I know it's running now, right? So let me check online how it looks like, right? Again, there is no UI in this particular instance because I'm building a microservice. It's all API, right? I'm building an API based on your input of data points, right? So I go here now, and this is my address, right? And look at this. Swagger Petstar Starter Kit, right? And... Uh, this is my API. So this thing I just built, right, by having one command. I have no developers in the room, right? You actually can do it yourself, guys. I'm empowering you to do it yourself. You discover the domain, and you can actually build a, a full-fledged mock of the API, and you can give it to another developer who is consuming this API, like a UI developer, right? And they can start playing with it, because, by the way, it's not just dumb, uh, dumb API. It has a mock server behind it, right? It, all the data are being mocked. And you can prepare the data, right? So for instance, I'll show it to you how you do it as well here. So you go, you go here, right, and Visual Studio Code again. And by the way, if you never use Visual Studio Code, it's a beautiful tool. You come here and you say, well, I'm going to mock this data, right? It looks a little bit kludgy for you because it's, it's a JSON format. But you can see there is a name, Alessi, right, the H10, date of birth, right? It's a type of a cat, right? So what I'm doing is I'm mocking it. So I mock that. Right, and, I'm, and maybe I'm working it as a developer. That's what I do, you know. Like. And uh, I run, I run a little program, and now I have full-fledged API built for me, right? So I can look at it, and I can actually, you know, try it out, and see if it works and stuff. And I can actually expose this API to a UI developer, and they can play with it. And then this API will serve uh, a specific information that you can actually then use for your screen development. You can populate the screen, right, guys? Again, complex domains. You give me those uh, definition of the nouns, right? What's, what's required? What's the field name? What's the, uh, you know, what's the data type, right? String, integer, you know, decimal points. I take this information, copy paste into this little tool, and I, ha and I build an API for you guys, right? You understand? In three days, I finish something that takes like six months. You understand? I compressed everything together, like, you know, I'm not doing MVP. Forget about MVP, right? I'm going to build you the entire product in three days, as long as you give me time to discover it, as long as you give me time to talk to my you know, experts and define those data points, those models, right? And spend time documenting the model, right? And I build it for you. There is no point of doing MVP because it's already here. I'm not sacrificing anything, you know? Literally, guys, I can build any software product that's based on microservices in a matter of days. And this is not a joke, guys. You know, like I, I'm passionate about it. That's why you can hear me like screaming my heart out. But it's true. It's very true, guys. It's, it's, that's why it's so powerful and valuable, right? So what, what's next? Last, I promise you, last thing. All right, so this is Mark, right? Nothing is working. You, you cannot even build it because it's all like prepackaged as a Mark product. It's, it's kind of throwaway product, but it's fully functional Mark. I give it to my UX and they wire you, you know, UI around it, you know, React JS components, whatever, right? But then, when it's all nice and done and tested, right? I say, listen, Constantine, I have the Java developers, right? They need to take this prototype to the next level. They need to put logging framework around it. They need to put security 
can you help my developers to head start? And I say, yes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to generate Java code off of this copy paste of your data points, right? And I'll show you that in a second. So I come here and I run this. NPM run, right? And just give me one second here. So I'm going here and I'm going. Um, package JSON, right? And I say npm run code dash gen, right? Code generator. So I click on it, and what it does, it takes those files that you copy paste and produce full fledged Java development suite, right? Two seconds that you see the running this thing, right? Produce hundreds and thousands of lines of code that I can give my development team, and they can start building to a certain standard, right? You need to have a you know, maybe you need to build some kind of monitoring into this code, right? But I gave you already product, project that you take to your developers. Developers already can start working on something. And a lot of things that they do in software development, right? A lot of code that they build is actually not useful at all. It's, it's only useful for certain, you know, access the database, you know, like, or create an object, right? And those things that I hate to work on, I would rather work on complex algorithmic things, right? Like that challenges me mentally, but these mundane things that I really hate are gonna be pre-generated for you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna prove it to you, right? Because you can see it's entire project now exists on this CTM Spring folder, right? So if I open this folder right here, right? And you can see it's, it's I already opened it from the past, right? This whole thing is a Java project. You see this Java files here, right? They define you like an address, right? Look at that. Right? How many lines of code just for this address thing? Like 157 lines of code. I just built this 157 lines of code in two seconds. Right? You can see, right? And you can see all these things are quite useful, right? I'm, I'm defining my objects here. Right? This address is my public class address, right? They're all the things that you need developer to build are built automatically off the data that you designed during your <coughs> event storming session, right? And by the way, there is zero, zero uh, bugs here. Right? Because it's auto generated by the code generator, right? There is no typos here. Right? Code generator takes to whatever you define in the model and gives you this, right? And how many lines of code this project is, right? Like you can see there's a pet class, there is a veterinarian class, right? With all the objects. You see this one is another like hundred thousand. So there is all the controllers here, right? Like exceptions, right? All the all the um, libraries, right? Imports, right? Everything. Like look at that. I did not have 87 lines of code, right? And by the way, this code is proper. This code is not a junior type of code, junior developer type of code that you see, right? It's, it's actually quite well laid out and structured, right? Because it uses best practices. And those code generators available for Java, for C Sharp, you know, you name it, for Node.js, for uh, Angular JS. You know, those code generators built by uh, open source community. This tool is open source as well. Like, I, I build it. I package some of the things, but it's all open source, guys. This tool is free, available to you, right? I mean, I didn't publish it yet, but I'll probably, probably publish it. So if you follow me on GitHub or Twitter, you'll see it at some point. So now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, you see the power of event storming from discovering the domain, documenting it, and building the software. Now, this thing needs to be passed to your developers so they can make it enterprise and scalable. That's it, guys. A uh, couple things is I'm going back to the presentation mode, guys, right? Because uh, a few things left. So let me just uh, present. Demo time is done, right? You've seen this, you've seen this, you've seen code, you've seen demo code, Java. This is what you want, right? Time one that makes everybody unhappy to time one that makes everybody happy. This is important, guys. This is timeline of delivery. Faster it's faster because I automate hell out of this whole thing, right? My developers now happy because they don't have to write scaffolding code. Scaffolding was pre-generated for them. Now go and build your secret sauce, right? Makes make money, right? And thank you guys.